Iowa! How beautiful are you? It's so great to be back. How many of us are here today? What's the official count? I'm going to give a Trumpian number. There are five million people here today. As you know, I am not a career politician. I'm an entrepreneur and problem solver. And I'm here with a message. It is up to you, the people of Iowa, to solve the biggest problem of our time. It's a problem our country has been struggling with. And the problem is this. Why is Donald Trump our president? Oh, really, if you think about it, how the heck did he win Iowa by nine points? How did he win Wisconsin? How do you win Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania? And if you turn on cable news, you get a whole series of answers. The answers go something like Russia, racism, Facebook, the FBI, Hillary Clinton, and some cocktail and some mixture. But I'm a numbers guy, and the numbers tell a different story, a very clear story. The reason why Donald Trump is our president is this. We automated away 4 million manufacturing jobs in Ohio, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, and 40,000 right here in Iowa. How many of you have seen stores closing where you live right now? And why are those stores closing? One word answer, Amazon. Amazon is a trillion dollar tech company sucking $20 billion a year out of your communities. How much did Amazon pay in taxes last year? That's right, Amazon paid less in taxes than everyone here together today. 30% of America's stores and malls are closing as we speak, including thousands here in Iowa. And the most common job in most of the country is working in retail. The average retail clerk is a 39-year-old woman making between $9 and $11 an hour. When her store closes, what is her move, ne next move going to be? How many of you have seen self-serve kiosks when you go into a McDonald's or fast food restaurant? McDonald's says they will be in every location in the country in the next two years. When you call a customer service line of a big company and you get the bot or the software in the line, you probably do the exact same thing I do which is you say, zero, 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 human, 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 until you get a person on the line. Am I right, Iowa? Yeah. In two or three short years, the software is going to sound like this. Hey, Andrew, how's it going? What can I do for you? It's going to be delightful, efficient, a little bit seductive, apparently. <laughs> you might not even realize it's software. What is that going to mean for the two and a half million Americans who work at a call center right now making $14 an hour? I was just at Iowa 80 in Davenport. How many of you have been to Iowa 80 in this last little while? I know why you went for the buffet. It's a great value. And they say very proudly that 5,000 people stop there every single day. My friends in Silicon Valley are working on cars and trucks that can drive themselves. They tell me they are 98% of the way there. There are self-driving trucks on our highways right now. What is that going to mean for the 3.5 million Americans who drive a truck for a living or the 7 million Americans who work at truck stops, motels, and diners around the country that rely upon people getting out and having a meal? Donald Trump is not the cause of all of our problems. He is a symptom. He is a manifestation. We're in the midst of the greatest economic transformation in the history of our country, what experts are calling the Fourth Industrial Revolution. When's the last time you heard a politician say the words Fourth Industrial Revolution? Just now, and I am barely a politician. This is the set of problems that got Donald Trump elected. You saw it on your farms. You saw it in your manufacturing plants. You're now seeing it in your main street shops, and it's going to continue to eat through our economy. It's going to devastate rural areas in particular, because we know that rural areas are getting sucked dry first. So what are the solutions? What is the vision we need you, the people of Iowa, to take to the rest of the country as fast as possible? If you've heard anything about me and my campaign, you've heard this. There's an Asian man running for president who wants to give everyone $1,000 a month. You remember hearing that? Thank you, Yang Yang. And the first time you heard it, I know it sounded like a gimmick, like it was too good to be true. But when you dig into our country's history, this is a deeply American idea. Thomas Paine was for it at our founding, called it the citizen's dividend. Martin Luther King championed it in the 60s, called it the guaranteed minimum income for all Americans, and it is what he was fighting for on the day he was killed in 1968. 
A thousand economists endorsed it. It passed the U.S. House of Representatives twice in 1971, and 11 years later, one state passed a dividend where now everyone in that state gets between one and $2,000 a year, no questions asked. And what state is that, Iowa? And how does Alaska pay for it? And what is the oil of the 21st century? That's right, technology, self-driving cars and trucks, big data. There was a study that just came out that said our data is worth more than oil. How many of you got your data check in the mail? That is the reality of the 21st century economy. Your community is getting sucked dry, companies profiting to the billions, and you see zero. This is the math that we have to change. We have to build a trickle-up economy that works for you all as fast as possible. Now this $1,000 a month after I'm president, thank you, Iowa, after I'm president and we pass the freedom dividend and you get this $1,000 a month, where will the money go in real life? What would you spend it on? I heard beer. <laughs> we are at a steak fry. The money would go right back into your communities. It would go to daycare, car repairs you've been putting off, little league sign-ups, local organizations. This is how we rejuvenate the economy and make it instead of the winner-take-all economy we're all saddled with, an economy that's built around our needs, our values, our value as people, as owners and shareholders of this great country. I've been giving the Freedom Dividend personally to families around the country for the last number of months. And one of the recipients is a guy named Kyle Christensen who lives in Iowa Falls, Iowa. And he's at home taking care of his mom who's recovering from cancer. I saw him last month and he seemed like a new man. And he told me he spent some of the money on a guitar and was playing shows for the first time in years. For Kyle it was a guitar, for Jody Fassi it was car repairs, for Mallory Shannon it was going back to school. But these are the choices. This is what the money means to us in real life. Now, I talk a little bit about how our measurements are messed up. How many of you woke up excited about GDP this morning? <laughs> GDP is at record highs. You know what else are record highs in America today? Stress, financial insecurity, suicides, drug overdoses. It's gotten so bad that our life expectancy has declined for the last three years in a row, the first time in 100 years. And I talk about my wife who's at home with our young boys right now, one of whom is autistic. What is her work calculated at in GDP and her economic measurements every day? Zero. Zero, and we know that's the opposite of the truth. We know the work she's doing is among the most challenging and important and vital work there's, there is. I was off the trail for a couple of days looking after our kids, and you know what I said after a couple of days? Get me back to something easy like running for president. And you know what I mean? If you're a parent, it's so hard, but it's the best work there is. This is the vision we have to take to the rest of the country as quickly as possible, of an economy that works for us. And if you look back, Donald Trump won in 2016 by pointing out the problems. And what did Hillary Clinton say in response? He said, make America great again. What did Hillary say? America is already great. And we lost. We need a new message. He defined the problems, but his solutions were the opposite of what we need. Donald Trump's solutions were we're going to build a wall, we're going to turn the clock back, we're going to bring the old jobs back. We have to do the opposite of all that, Iowa. We have to turn the clock forward. We have to accelerate our economy and society as quickly as possible. We have to evolve in the way we think about work and value, and I am the ideal candidate for that job because the opposite of Donald Trump is an Asian man who likes math. Now, math is an acronym. It stands for Make America Think Harder. We're going to let our fellow citizens know that it is not immigrants that are causing these problems. It is automation and technology. It is a fourth industrial revolution. And there is one criteria you all have for your nominee. It is this. Who is the best situated to beat Donald Trump in 2020? Raise your hand if that's your main criteria for the nominee. Oh, I'm a numbers guy. I am one of only two candidates in the field that 10% or more of Donald Trump voters say they will support. So if I am your nominee, we will win. 
We can bring in thousands of disaffected Trump voters, independents, libertarians to join with us as Democrats and progressives because it is not left, it is not right, it is forward, and that is where we're going to take the country in 2020. Thank you, Iowa. I love you. I will see you soon. Thank you, Iowa. Thank you.